Welcome to Investigation 1.1. In this investigation, we're going to be looking at exponential growth. So we're going to be talking about making ballots. That's what this book is going for as of right now. So it's essentially we are cutting something in half, and then if we were to cut both of those things in half, and then both of those things in half, or and all of those things in half, what would we end up getting? And it, what we'll end up finding is that we'll find um, an exponential growth model. So here's the introduction to this whole concept. So for investigation 1.1, making ballots, so we're introducing exponential functions, we have this guy Chen. He is the secretary of the Student Government Association. He's making ballots for a meeting. Chen starts by cutting a sheet of paper in half, then he stacks two pieces and cuts them in half again. With four pieces, now he stacks them and cuts them in half again. By repeating this process, he makes smaller and smaller paper ballots. So let's grasp what's going on here. So here is our launch. He starts out with one singular piece of paper right here, one piece of paper, and zero cuts. So he has a ballot essentially that is an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, something that we see on a regular basis. He then goes and cuts that in half. So how many ballots would he have after one cut, guys? Hopefully you are shouting out one cut equals two ballots. After that, he then cuts it again. So how many ballots does he have? Two cuts equals how many ballots? Four ballots. Awesome. So I'm starting to see a pattern here. Everything I'm seeing, well, with one cut, we have two ballots, so it's like one times two equals two. Two cuts equals four ballots, so two times two equals four. So if we have three cuts, how many ballots do we have? Three cuts. We have eight ballots. Well, three times two doesn't get me eight, but how about two times two times two? How many twos do we have? One, two, three twos, and I'm getting eight from that. So let's fill out this table that I have over here. Let's look at and see what we got. We have a number of cuts versus number of ballots. So if we have zero cuts, we had just one ballot. If we have one cut, how many ballots did we have? Let's look at our model. Oh, it looks like we had two ballots. I'll put that in yellow. If we had two cuts, oops, I just added an S to something that I shouldn't have. Sorry, two cuts, we get four ballots. And for three cuts, I'm seeing eight ballots. So this is what's called an exponential function, and we're going to be looking at this throughout the rest of our, um, the rest of this investigation. So let's talk really quick before we go on about our focus question. So thinking about this concept of exponential functions, our focus question is the following. Let's see if I can type this up here for you guys. I'd like you to be able to describe the pattern oops, of change in what you see, and I want you to be able to describe how many ballots are there after n cuts. So essentially I want you to get super general with this whole concept. Let's see if I can get this bigger. So here is our question. Describe the pattern of change. How many ballots are there after n cuts? So essentially we're getting this, making this super general. I'm not just asking for how many ballots would there be after 8 cuts? How many ballots would there be after 10 cuts? I'd like you to make it super general and turn it into what if we don't know how many cuts there are? What if there's a million cuts? That's too hard for us to actually do all the math for. So let's figure out what equation, what equation 
will get us that. So your job is to do A through C for this investigation. It begins on page 8. Try your hand at it. Enjoy.